Hello fellow scientists, my name is Mary Catherine Haster and I'm a research scientist in the College of Arts and Sciences Microscopy at Texas Tech University. My job is to help professors and students process their samples and take pictures on the electron microscope so that they can publish their research data. I was really excited and glad to be asked to help you process your samples project I'm calling Space Spores, um, so that we can be able to image your samples on the electron microscope. So today I'm going to show you a few of the steps that we took to process those samples. So come into the lab with me and we'll get started. I received two pellets of spores one that had been in space and one that had not. Um, and they were labeled samples one and two, so I didn't know which one had been in space. And these samples were in a liquid medium. And to process the samples, we remove the liquid and replace it with alcohol. And then we replace the alcohol with a plastic resin that is liquid at room temperature, but when you put it in an oven, hardens. This is the sample. Once it's taken out of the oven after 48 hours, you'll notice that it's now a hard block, and you can just barely see the sample at the very tip. Next, we'll go to the cutting room, I'll show you how we cut the sample. I'm sure you're all familiar with a light microscope. If we were going to cut your sample for a light microscope, we might put it on a glass slide. But a light microscope can only magnify something to a thousand times. And we need to look at your sample at a much higher mag to be able to see if there are any changes in its shape and size. So we're going to use an electron microscope because an electron microscope can magnify something up to a million x. But of course, we're not going to use a million x for your project. But it can get up that high. So for electron microscopy, instead of putting it on a glass slide, we're going to put your sample on this grid. This grid looks like your screen door. It has bars and it has holes in the center. And our sections are going to be on this grid and go into the electron microscope. So right now I'm going to show you how we're going to cut your block to pick up the sections and put them on this grid. And then we're going to go to the electron microscope. Uh, now I'm going to pick up the grids. I have my um, grid in my left hand and I'm going into the boat and you can see the sections floating and I'm going to help the sections go onto that copper grid. Those sections contain the spores that we will then look at on the electron microscope. Um, this is the specimen rod that holds that little grid that we saw in the cutting room. So this has our sections on it that contain our spores. And we are loading that grid right in to the holder. Now we're going to put our grid into the path of the electrons. Remember, the electrons are coming down the column. So we're going to put our grid right about here, and the electrons will interact with our sample. I've turned on the scope and started the electrons flowing. You can see the result down here. Here's the beam. Here is the image of those spores. So those spores that came to us in that little vial and went through all our processes, we can now image and actually see on the screen and save those images.
once again, I'm very grateful to have been asked to be part of this project. Um, I found it really exciting and, and kind of challenging, and um, I hope that some of you students will um, go into uh, STEM and uh, maybe you go into space. Signing off from the College of Arts and Sciences, this is Mary Catherine Hester.